Am I going that slow? <laughs> we're all gonna have those lows. It's inevitable. Um, we're all gonna have those points where we're just about to crack or we're in tears. What gets me back up is a goal I'm working towards. And when you're low, when you're in those slumps, that goal is what's gonna get you back going and get those engines revving again. I'm, uh, I'm beyond excited. Um, I've been hearing about this trip for almost close to a year now, and uh, the amount of work and preparation that has gone into this is just mind boggling. All, their sell all, their all your guys' saddles have been way too long. Yeah. Go ahead and stop at the bottom of your saddle rotation. Well, it's yeah. definitely surreal, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> For almost two years in planning, uh, $97,000 later, we're hoping to hit 100 by the end, uh, and lots of hours on the bike. So how are you feeling now that we're starting the trip? Nervous. <laughs> Nervous. Ready. Ready to get going. And having never done this before, having never ridden the route, how do I think I'll do? I'm going to crush it. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll go well. Your insurance card. Great. I'm gonna sleep in the shower. Accident, you want to this out I'd be happy sleeping on the roof. <laughs> so Put a tent and a sleeping pad up there, and you actually could. The one up against the fence? You wish you were coming with us. Don't no, you? the one right in front. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, wish I was fine, going right? somewhere because I'm six days a week here. So <laughs> it is. A glove. <laughs> so right now your waste tanks are open. So you want to make sure you push in both of the valves and put the cap on. <laughs> <laughs> the brewer, and the keys it. should be in the cup holder. Okay. So honestly, Connor and I were sitting on our couch one Sunday morning. Said, "Man, we're not doing anything for any other, anybody. Um, we wanted to do something for someone and something that was bigger than us." And uh, we said, "All right, let's find something to do." All right, go ahead and hop off. Thanks, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate your work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Several years ago, I was sitting at my computer and scrolling on LinkedIn like I, like I love to do. And I came across a video that Yanni had posted, and it was a video of his TEDx talk. So there's 30 people in there that have the best therapy in the world at their fingertips. They can see it, they can look at it, and they were not able to participate in it. And I watched it, and I remember almost feeling like someone touched me, tapped me on the shoulder and said, you have to do something. You, know, you have to help this guy and this cause. And about a week later, Connor came to me and said, hey man, you gotta watch this TED talk. Uh, I want you to hear about this guy, Yanni Corey. He's got this organization called Next Step. It's awesome what they're doing. Um, we should do something for them. And that was about two years ago. And then Connor and I started planning from there and here we are. Well, Next Step really grew out of my own um, you know, my own in reality need. You know, at first we thought about just starting a bunch of machines in our garage and training some of our friends and then, you know, pretty soon after we came up with that ridiculous idea, you know, we said, why don't we make these services available to the entire community? And uh, that's how it all began. There's a huge awareness uh, problem in the United States and but it's one in 50 Americans uh, suffer from paralysis. The vast majority of those individuals don't have access to any type of uh, ongoing rehab or health care. Most of those six million people don't have access to anything like Next Step. Um, the reason these facilities don't exist um, is because they're extremely expensive to operate and extremely ex uh, expensive to start. You know, that is our mission is to continue to expand Next Step and build these facilities in communities across the country so you don't have to fly to another city to get rehab or uh, you don't have to give up sell your home to be able to afford rehab um, that's really what we're trying to make this affordable and available to 
people from all socioeconomic classes. You know, somebody has a spinal cord injury, it really affects not only the person that had the injury, the entire family and everybody's life gets completely flipped upside down. It's not only because of all the rehab that goes into it, but it's such a big financial burden for, uh, for the family. Um, so it's really important that we get the word out there so, um, you know, so we're able to help all these, all these people in need. It's probably people assume, oh, they're hospitals and they're rehab centers, there are places to go, but that's just not the truth. My name is Catherine Irene Portillo. I was actually um, born and raised in Belize, Central America. And then after high school, uh, I was sent to the United States to join the Air Force. Um, I didn't really have a choice. My dad was uh, like, you're gonna go to the Air Force, they're gonna feed you, put clothes on your back, educate you and give you a job. And that's all you need. So once I got in the Air Force, I was assigned as a logistics airman at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. And I served for five years as an enlisted member. I got out of the Air Force for three years to um, complete my bachelor's degree in exercise science. And since it was an Air Force scholarship, an ROTC scholarship, I came back into Air Force as a commissioned officer. I completed uh, 18 years in Air Force total and um, retired as a major. I was medically discharged actually because of the accident. I'm trying to make the best of life now with a disability. Can get it? This is the day we got engaged. Um, that's on Menemsha Beach. We watched a sunset. Yanni, the founder of Next Step, he had to uproot his life just to get the care that he, he needed. The care that he needed wasn't in the entire state of California. That's mind boggling. And the fact that now they've created that is amazing. This is about Next Step. It's about the people uh, out there who need uh, the assistance that Next Step Fitness brings. So another thing that I'm sort of looking to get out of this um, is to inspire somebody out there who, who needs a jolt. Um, someone who, who sees this and thinks, you know what, I'm going to... I'm going to give that a try. Uh, these guys are doing it. I can do it too. Hey, how do you like that? Good. You know, I've been there. I've, I've been in those dark times after my accident where I'm thinking, woe is me? Why me? But you look to the other things around you. You look to the people beside you who's supporting you, your goals, your faith, whatever has gotten you going before you return to those things to keep going. So why is it you're not going to shave your legs? I'm a man. I don't know, I consider myself a man. And I, Are you I shaving your legs? legs? Of course I do. Um, we're not as good, we're not as serious. Yeah, serious like <laughs> but yeah, she's lived down there for a couple of years. Tell you what, once you do, you'll never go back. Uh, no, no. Did you get that? Uh, <laughs> trying to get your attention, Connor. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I did it here. <laughs> it, it, it um, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. That wasn't on me, was it? Uh, you were in the background. Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> Video <laughs> evidence. It was. Yeah. <laughs> we had a rough start for Gallagher. Um, I think that I I consider myself an extremely lucky individual to have been included on this group because I'm kind of like the random guy. I feel like everybody bring so much value to the table here so I just feel so fortunate to be able to connect with so many astounding people I mean Merv, CJ, uh, Connor and Mike Alberts their leadership throughout this has been absolutely essential um, you know I've got a couple falls out of the way so you know I'm feeling very confident moving forward but I think if I follow these guys I'll be all right well we got a hundred miles we're just going down to Colorado Springs we're doing a quick quick trip just to get out of Denver Everyone's going to start as a group, a cohesive group, ride the first 10 miles, and then uh, we're going to have a few people jump off, do 50, and then another 50 after that. And uh, we'll end up in Colorado Springs, we'll have a beer to celebrate, and then we have a huge day tomorrow of 200 plus miles where, a lot of, where everyone's going to be biking a pretty intense load. So get ready for a great show. All right, team. First of all, on behalf of the community of people living with paralysis, the six million strong, 
I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for doing this, for raising the money. So I wanted to get something for the team. We face a long, hard road. Uh, not much different than what people with paralysis face after they have an injury. It's a long, tough road, a lot of uphills, a lot of downhills. And what's important about that ride is morale. I have no, no, I have no question the morale in here is going to be unbelievable. But here, Mike. Oh. But sometimes you have to have a little fun. <laughs> So what happened? Why did you guys get lost? Uh, Mike Alberts decided to go the wrong direction just to prove us to prove to us that he was in better shape. We have no uh, brakes, uh, brake lights, or uh, turn signal lights in the trailer. We wore through some wiring and it shorted the system, blue fuses, so all we have to do is fix the wiring, which is already fixed, and replace the fuses, and we're good. We should be ready. We've had blown tires, we've had lost group, we've had uh, go fuse boxes gone, we've had a lot of you know minor issues, but it's gonna season us for the rest of the ride, I think. Right? Yeah. That's right. Uh, did you think it was going to be this challenging this quickly? Uh no. I thought I was gonna be hanging around drinking beer. <laughs> Just enjoying the trip. How you feeling? Good man. Feeling fresh? Yeah, man, I, I could have kept going. Yeah, sure. Um, so we reached the end of the Cherry Creek Trail. Um, I think we had about five miles to go, and it just sort of just cut out, and then it was gravel roads from there on, and uh, we turned a couple times, and then we just got into this neighborhood that was just kind of, it was kind of a sketchy situation. We didn't really know where we were going, and our phones were dying, because um, all the GPS apps are killing our phones. Um, so we figured just play it safe and uh, have everybody come pick us up. But uh, feel good after the first day. Had a lovely ride with David here, um, and uh, it was killer ride. It was awesome. Good day. Yeah, just uh, we were just saying how how amazing the scenery is going to be, and the all, the skies and just the yeah. fresh and the fresh air. So yeah, uh, Tough yeah. To beat. yeah. What? We're just gonna keep falling. You don't have to. Guys, I want to. We're going right. so slow. These cars are flying, are Chris, so without us. Guys. Yeah. Really? yeah. You, you're you're like, really hard to see. Really? Away. They're following me, so yeah. the whole way. Dude, my the light went out, and I was like, uh oh. Yeah. Well, you got what? 18 miles left, I think. I got more. I don't want that. All right, let's go. Just you got two and a half hours left. That's what it's saying. That's at a 10 mile per hour pace. Yeah. You're better than that. Let's do this. Let's go, CJ. It was a motor vehicle accident. Um, that caused it. Uh, we were heading to a Christmas party, and the, as we were getting on the freeway, it must have been a dark area or something. My husband was driving, and he hit something, and I, we just heard a big thump under the vehicle, and it propelled the vehicle to the right. Somehow, my husband couldn't get control of the vehicle. It felt like something was stuck under the tire, and then somehow we just started rolling. The vehicle started rolling on its side. 
we landed upside down. And as the vehicle stopped from the rolling, that's when my head went back. I had whiplash. And that's what broke my neck. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand, obviously, what had happened at the time. I just remember when the vehicle stopped, my husband, I told my husband that he needed to go call for help because it was dark. We couldn't see our cell phones. So he finished breaking through his um, window and he went outside in the freeway to get help. And I remember trying to reach for my seatbelt to unstrap myself so that I could get out and get help as well or look for a cell phone to call 911. But I couldn't move my arms and I thought I broke it. So I kept saying, I broke my arm, I broke my arm. I'm not really realizing that I was actually instantly paralyzed. It was about two months for me to really understand. It wasn't until I was at the VA hospital that when I saw other people around in the VA hospital in wheelchairs, and I was told that bowel and bladder care would be done for the rest of my life, that it hit me that, shit, I'm paralyzed the rest of my life. Woke up at 4 a.m. for a nice 5.30 bike ride. We did about 40 miles. Uh, I think close to 9,000, at 9,000 feet elevation. Feeling pretty good. A little delirious, but feeling good. You just finished your bike run for the day. How are you feeling? Feeling fantastic. Best 27 miles I've ever ridden. Beautiful. A little sore in the beginning, but all good. You were nervous about today? No. No? <laughs> where are we right now and where are we going? Right now, I have no idea where we are. We are uh, we're in Cody Maxi, aren't we? Texas Creek. Got her. Texas Creek. 10 minutes behind. Well done. Nice job. All right, let's go. Days, go. Hey, Ryder O'Toole, you guys got to pick up 10 minutes. As soon as I get my next Snapchat up, I'll be uh, <laughs> my momentum will be out the roof. Just enjoying the sweet, sweet smell of America. America. You know? How does it smell? Uh, I mean, if you're riding behind Brittany, it's pretty rank, but uh, if you get ahead of the wind, it's, it's pretty fresh. My name is Brendan O'Toole, uh, United States Marine. Done some work in the veteran advocacy work, uh, especially with wounded veterans coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan. The whole idea of surrounding and supporting wounded veterans with the Next Step grant that we're putting together, uh, that was obviously something near and dear to my heart with all the work I've done with um, service members and being in the military myself. If you're going to do something to support an organization, um, you got to do something that stands out. And I just thought what Yanni's doing with uh, Next Step is, is pretty impressive. So it was, it was kind of an easy sell, to be honest. Feel good. Nothing like climbing 2,000 feet. Sticking with this guy. <laughs> oh, you, yeah. yeah. My opportunity was to go as a physical therapist, so I definitely jumped on that opportunity without any second thought. Um, I mean, you can't really pass up a trip like this and to be a part of a team with such amazing people, um, you know, and to be traveling through such beautiful country. Uh, I mean, I'm totally in my element here, being out in the middle of nowhere, in the mountains, and. So I'm trying my best to do as much as possible to enjoy every ounce of this trip. Mike's been preparing for this for, I think, almost a year now. Um, and I've never met an able-bodied person that puts in so much hard work and dedication. Hey guys. <laughs> I have him staring at me right here, so uh, I better answer this. I better answer this well. We are having pork tenderloin and mashed potatoes. So, try to get them all fueled up for tomorrow. Oh my gosh, well, uh, I tell you what, our support staff has been unbelievable. Beth, we would not eat, we would not be alive without Beth. She did everything for us. She went out and 
got food from the grocery store, cooked the food for us to not only save money, but also just so we could all be together and made sure there was nutrition ready to go for all the bikers. Hey, Beth, okay. Beth, whenever you guys like start do you making sandwiches, would you make them? Okay. I don't want them right now. I'll just throw it in the paste. Sure. Okay, cool. Just whatever kind. You know, cooking for 15 people on its own is tough. And then when you're in a mini kitchen with people in and out of the RV at all times and boys that eat twice as much as I normally eat. It's, uh, it was tough to kind of accommodate everybody and make sure I had enough food because they're burning 2,000 calories every two hours. Um, but I feel like after the first couple days, I kind of figured it out. And um, I had a great team that always was offering help and support. So I think that, you know, we came in as a bunch of strangers for the most part and you we're living in tight quarters and long days together and so we uh, had to kind of get to know each other pretty quick and throw everything out the window and just have a good time and I think that everybody has just had such a great attitude and cheering everybody on along the way and yelling out the window and providing support and people getting IVs and food and making sandwiches and whatever everybody just pitched in wherever it was possible and it was such a fun week. Are those magnets? Yeah, man. That's pretty neat. Little arrow. Oh, that's sick. There you go. Yeah, they actually look really cool, too. That's, you know, these, these look, look good. Look, look good, right? ride good. Awesome. You know, when you're on an RV with 15 people, yeah, you know, people, <laughs> there's going to be some funny, funny stories, but we're all leaving with this, with our heads held high, arms around each other, and, and honestly, every, every skiff has been fixed like that. Um, which is something that you just don't have. And I think it's just because of the cause. It's, so, it's just so much bigger than us. Um, so any problems we have is just not, not important. Oh, man. Oh, wow. That's, that's wind. Good that thing we got soft. David out there wind and Ryder. Is he on? Is he out? All of us were uh, in a chain. You know, we were in like this I formation. And, you know, it's, it's a way of, of drafting, you know, getting less uh, restrictions from the air. Um, and it was just it was just remarkable to see everyone's tires just you know a few inches apart we were all just in this one groove just flowing so natural you know it was like we've been training together for years but the reality is we hadn't biked once together but the other thing that i was looking forward to was the scenery you know, I didn't really know what to expect. You know, you, you hear about, you know, the Mojave Desert. You hear about, uh, you know, the Rocky Mountains, but you don't, you don't know what they're like. You can't, you, you can't look at a picture, right, and say, I know exactly how, what it feels like to be there, what it smells like, what the sun feels like, you know. And 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 I was looking forward to experiencing all the senses in those various locations and. Those exceeded my my expectations as well. I mean, God, there's nothing like being on the road in the Mojave Desert with the sun beating down on you. It is hot, <laughs> and there's nothing like cruising up the you know the various trails around the Rocky Mountains. They're uphill and they're steep. It's a lot of work, um, but there's a great sense of pride in, in 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 beating those elements. Right? There's a great sense of pride in beating the heat and beating the uphill battles and beating the dirt roads. Uh, and I loved every moment of it. When I first started rehabilitation, I was at the VA facility, the spinal cord injury. Um, when I started the rehab, I cried a lot, to be honest with you. I was very emotional because I used to be at the gym and I used to be lifting the weights and doing cardio and my mind always goes back to the days when I was in the gym doing those. So I cry a lot because I can't do those, those exercises anymore. Now I have to have somebody guide me through it and push me, hold me, guide me to do those exercises. So I get nostalgic. It's, it's, it's emotional at times, but other times I'm grateful that people are here to help me through it. When I first saw about Next Step, um, a video that a friend had showed me, my initial instinct was like, oh, that pay, the facility is too good for me to go to. Like, I'm not gonna be able to make it to the facility. Like it was, like I wouldn't be able to afford to come here. Um, but no, but Yanni called me at, when I was at the VA hospital, or I called him, I think. He was just like doing a brain dump, just trying to tell me and advise me of as many things as possible as far as like bed sores and um, 
getting turned and uh, it's just the, the outreach of support that they have has been um, impressive and for it to be a state-of-the-art facility for it to be so personal is I think it's been amazing. It is, yeah, day four already. Wow, we still have, what, four more days to go? Um, so far, so good. Uh, the landscape is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and we're about to cross into Arizona. So I think we're making, I think we're making good time. All right, how are we feeling? that? We good? Route 66, baby. <laughs> oh, nice. My nonprofit charity is Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. JDRF is my cause because I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was three years old. But, you know, I still focus on the day-to-day -day routine, um, and Murphy does the same thing. And being a part of something like this and being able to go through a bike ride with Murphy, just see the joy on his face, um, to be able to get out, it's, you know, it's why you, we keep doing what we do. I need to get my girlfriend some jewelry from the Indian Reservation. Might have to take a uh, turn around when we're done. Mike, as well as a few of the other guys, have always been kind of my third and fourth older brothers, and I've always really looked up to him. Hey, sir. Hey, we need to work together. Okay. Hold on. Slow down at the top of the ridge. Okay. We rotate. Person in the back goes to front to block. I'll start hey, us off. Not even. We can do 60 seconds. Don't get more than a couple feet yeah. separation. Yeah. You call the switch. Be so aware, be awesome. aware, I'm still warming up. All right, me no, too. That, that's why we're gonna that's why we're all working together. I like we're it. a team, there's no point of being individuals. Alright. Sounds good to me. Here, Phil, go ahead. Mike has always been the person that people look to when times are tough. Set a nice easy pace and then just drop off to the left. And then Phil, you take over at whatever pace is comfortable. He has just been an inspiration to us and to be able to get on the road with him and really see him do his thing, it inspires me to take better care of myself. Uh, I was actually the pace driver when Charlie, Phil, and Mike were all um, kind of drafted back and forth on each other and it's just really cool to see. We kept hitting a lot of rough terrain, uh, hit a lot of dirt roads. You feeling good? Yeah. Yeah, good. These dirt roads really suck. hills so Phil and uh, Charlie kind of booked it up to the top of the hill got off their bikes and came down to meet Mike to really give him a kind of a boost up the up the loose gravel that was pretty slippery just again just those images of teamwork I think are gonna stick stick in my mind for a long time about that view? Incredible. Just incredible. Day five, baby! Dude, I don't know. Yesterday's hashtag was shoot the gap. And uh, today... <laughs> Yeah, you know, we right. haven't kicked the no, tires yet, so I don't think we have a... Uh, so we can't really light the fires? Can't light the fires. It's up to you. I mean, it's gonna be Too aggressive to be lighting the fires this early. Mm. Well, I work in pediatric ICU, so I see a lot of um, children that have new injuries. 
spinal cord injuries, um, brain injuries. So it just means a lot to be able to do this for them. I mean, this whole journey has just been inspiring. All right, gang, I'm going to slide this forward. So I'll show this video to Enterprise. I don't know, Mike, this seems like a pretty good way to ride. Just get to check myself out all day long in this mirror. I mean, you just, you can't really put into words how, how cool it is just to be able to do something like this and for a great cause. I don't know, the whole thing is just incredible. I mean, the views that we've seen, the, the climbs we've done, the um, speed down the mountains. I mean, we've been flying down these mountains on 75 mile an hour highways. Day five, baby, day five. No pain, no gain. Have another one? It's moments like this that we train for. What? Well, well, some of us. Do I want another one? Or do we have yeah, another one? one for you? <laughs> if you guys don't feel comfortable going down Ash Fork, because it's only a few miles, you might, you could just stay on I-40 to exit 139. Yeah, this one just it gets you off I-40 for a little bit, scenic. You know, it's not necessarily necessary. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. Do scenery? All right, just don't get lost. <laughs> It's just the coolest thing. You go to see places that you never would in a car, normally in a car, and um, we just we got to ride our bikes through it, so it's pretty awesome. I'm a little dehydrated, so we've been working on that this morning, but I'm excited. I get to ride with my cuz, Jaeger. I, I would say I pushed myself onto the team, but I think that they're happy I did. I hope the cause in and of itself is incredibly important to me. Um, when I was little, I used to volunteer in my summers uh, for Shake-A-Leg for uh, people with mental, physical disabilities, all ages. And I have a cousin who has special needs and I just, I've always been sort of magnetized towards, towards this, this community. And I think it's extremely important. They can sense it. They can sense it. Yeah, horses are really, really emotional. Is that not like a Kodak moment or is that a Kodak moment? Someone needs to take a picture. It's us? Alright. Who wants to go for a ride? Wait, I Let's do it. Not Let's do it. The family squad plus Murph heading out. Here we go. And the squad rolls out. Yeah. Do I get a push like the Olympics? Come on. When you're working out, you're working it out. So that's stuck with me and I feel like the physical aspect of this has, has helped me sort of get some peace on some things um, while simultaneously being able to give back. I mean, what's a greater gift than that? How are you feeling, Con? Doing well, brother. Doing well. Woo! CJ's fast. Riding with Jake, I had a really, we had a great moment together too uh, throughout the, I think it was the eastern plains of Arizona. Uh, we had some really good climbs. The wind was at the head the whole time. Uh, we were averaging about 18 and a half miles an hour uphill and uh, just doing a lot of drafting. And uh, that, that was a special moment to have with Jake. I'm really glad we got to ride together. Brendan and I were finishing like towards the end, going into Arizona, coming down a hill, beautiful sunset. This kind of quiet that I almost, I just can't describe. Not a car on the road. I mean, no picture would ever give this moment justice. So two years later after the accident, I feel, I feel like I was accepted the injury. Like this is how I'm gonna be probably for the rest of my life. Whereas initially, I, I just couldn't. I, I, I could not accept that I would be this way. I, I always thought that there was gotta be, that there's gotta be some way that I, we would be able to move, that this couldn't happen to me. I didn't do anything wrong. I think that's something that always plays through my mind. Like this was, a lot of people talk about karma. And 
I can see a lot of people thinking, oh, that's her karma for doing something wrong before. But I never did. A lot of people believe in God and hold on to God and their faith to help them through something difficult like this. And for me, it's somewhat contrary. For me, my situation is that I believed in God before this. I would tell you that I was saved and I prayed every morning and asked for God's will. And then this happened and I lost my faith in God. But I know the comfort that faith gives people. And I hope that I can have that faith again. But for now, it's changed for me. I try to think of the positivity that there still is in life. I still have my brain and I can think. I still have the love of my husband, a lot of friends, my wingmen in the Air Force. I try to think of those, of those little things in life to make every day as best as it could be. Mm -hmm. concerns uh, we should have about the bikes on this sort of terrain? Flats. Lots of flats, I think. There's rocks. The shoulders are mostly sand and rocks. I just think there's going to be a lot of rocks and glass and junk in the road and we're going to have a lot of flats. How's that? Good. I've done a number of races in 100 degree weather. I've trained in 90 degree weather before, um, but I've never done a, as long a ride as I'm planning to do in this weather, so that's uh, that's definitely a concern. It's like 100 degrees, yeah. Yeah. I need an ice pack. Okay. I'm totally gassed. Yeah. So. Nothing like biking through the Mojave Desert, you know? Yeah. I'm ready for that IV. Yeah? You want it right now? I'm so dehydrated. Really? Uh, we had some dehydration in the Mojave Desert. Um, so Chris Chris got some extra fluid to help him out. But other than that, I mean, just some, some aches and pains and nothing too bad. How are you feeling after the first stretch? I feel good. Um, the downhill is incredible. It's uh, definitely... Definitely nice. Uh, the downhills are awesome. Uh, one thing I love about this ride is you come over a big a ridge, you're working towards it, and then you see another one way in the distance, and you just work towards that, and just the, the views are just unbelievable. Great job, guys. Oh, you guys okay? Water, red water. We need water every five miles. Get me, baby! Dude, you are crushing it! More! <laughs> oh, yes! Oh, you won't! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! How are you feeling? I feel good. It kind of feels like riding next to an oven. Yeah. Rich being a little machine as of. He was going fast when I was with him. Yeah, he's going well. He looks strong. We yeah. Yeah, I think that this, this train is pretty good, right? I mean, he's so low to the ground, it's hot as hell down there, but... That's what he said, he's like, it's... Oh, my God. Not. It feels like I'm buying oven right yeah. now, but... But, yeah. Cool. Tell you, that ice water makes such a well, big... Well, I think really. we should do it for everybody. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you know, it just brings your body temperature down 10, 15 degrees. Yeah. It's, oh. it's huge.
Thank you. Thank you. When we were going through the Mojave Desert and people were um, just very thirsty and just dehydrated, um, but wanted to keep pushing the miles, um, we had everyone in the pace cars, RV, just um, just chasing the, the riders and um, giving them whatever they needed. Need anything? We're good. Okay. I've got some ice. They had ice, they had water. I mean, it was just a lifesaver. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the handoffs. I loved uh, Casey would just hand off, do these crazy handoffs with Murph and um, just be on top, anything he needed. You good, buddy? Yeah. Right, we're right in the chest. The this thing is awkward. Nice. <laughs> This is, this sucks. Okay, I gotta to top off then. That water heats up so quick. It's insane. It feels so good when it's that first pour. Oh my God. You guys want some of these? Thank you. All right. What time is it? Five on the dot. Five on the dot. Okay, we gotta get these next 10 miles done in 30 minutes. What do you think? Yes. I I'm totally in. think you can. I'm into it. Broncos game to catch. It's all good. So since I've started working with Next Step, I've seen uh, improvements in my, like, my neck. My neck has gotten stronger, my core. Um, so I'm able to, to sit up and hold my head up a lot longer now. Whereas before, it would just, my head would drop and I had a hard time holding it up. My neck would burn. Rehabilitation has definitely improved my daily life because it's, it, it's kind of like that exercise that I used to do before the accident. It gives me that routine. Um, it gives me that sense of like well-being and that I've done something for myself. I've tried to push my body a little bit more. I'm closer to improvement, to improved um, mobility. So yes, it improves my quality of life for sure. Get riding, let's go, we're in a hurry. We gotta get to Anaheim. Come here, come here. Have a good ride. Bye. I love you. Do you wanna be in the middle, Beth? No, I'll take the back. Adios. So it was a girls, um, girls ride. It was me, Kyler, and Beth. And we were on the road. They, um, the guys were pacing us and they first said it was going to be 30 miles, and then they said it's going to be 34 miles, and then so it kind of just kept slightly increasing as we were going. Beth, what? Does the seat feel a little low. No. You good on water? I'm okay. You're not drinking any. One bottle an hour. Get it, girl. You can ride him. All right, Kai. Woo! Get you some. Did you train for this event at all? No, I did not. 
I did not. I guess uh, I tried to study the grocery stores a little bit more carefully in my training, but uh, as far as riding at all, I did not. Good girl, bend it in your hips. What? Bend it your hips, get up on the hoods. There you go. Nice job, girls. You know, getting to go on a ride yesterday was pretty awesome, and it definitely opened my eyes to how much work these guys have put in. Because I jumped on a bike that I haven't been riding at all, and it was hard as hell. So these guys have been going for seven days riding 30 to 50 miles, and with a smile on their face the whole time. So it's pretty awesome. Tyler got a flat around mile like 33, 34. And then I hit a sign. I was like pointing. And then I was like. <laughs> well, look at that. I even lined it on the right car. All right. What? You're good to go. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Badass. Badass. You good? Yeah. All right. Go get him, girls. Drink. What? Yeah, you guys. Bottle, bottle an hour. Hey, Tim. You still thinking you're going to ride today? I'm not sure. I don't know if there's time. Bikes are breaking down. Most of it's on crappy roads. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, uh... Are you about to interview me? <laughs> well, I do want to know how you feel after your ride. I feel good, actually. Way better than I thought I, I would feel. How did you think you would feel? Like I was going to puke or something. No, you look good out there, man. Thanks. I was trying desperately to keep up. I think I was. You definitely did. But it finally, it felt good to finally do the activity that this whole trip revolves around, you know, biking. I've been doing everything else. So it was nice to actually go out and get in the saddle, as they say. So it felt really good. It was a lot of fun. Super tiring, but made me uh, admire the folks who've been putting so many miles on the clock every day. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, right up. How you doing, Tim? Oh. Good. Little, little, little I'm little okay. Little. You enjoying your first ride? Oh, yeah. Well, your helmets are too small. Just lay it right there. Lay How you feel, man? Yeah. I'm tired, but I'm good. Yeah. The wind. It's the wind. Yeah. If it weren't for wind, I'd be doing okay. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's amazing. Yeah. So we're going to go up on this mountain. Watch me up. Very quick. Yeah. And going out there with Murph was incredible. We had to climb this crazy steep hill, and I, I just, it was really tough for me to do it. I couldn't imagine him doing it on that bike of his with just arm strength. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, we, we noticed that. Yeah. If he was drafting off of me, that makes me feel pretty good. Now it's time to uh, relax, hopefully, and celebrate, get some dinner in my belly, and uh, have a good time. Yeah. Certainly earned it. <laughs> Oh man, next step has been um, sort of like a saving grace for me. Uh, coming here twice a week, I've been able to meet new people. Um, it definitely helps with my routine. I, it, I like to have something on my schedule 
and coming here gives me gives me a reason to get out of bed and get ready, get dressed, and um, I have my little coffee and I come prepare like it's my workout. The guys here are awesome. The guys and girls are awesome. They're like, hi, cat. Everybody before and before you leave, everybody's like, bye, cat. They make you feel special and loved. Um, so in addition to just the therapy and, and pushing you through your exercises, uh, it's, there's the love there at Next Step. And that's what kicks it up a notch in being a, a, a state-of-the-art facility. I've been to other facilities. I've done rehab somewhere else, and it kind of feels like the patient, doctor type of, uh, of uh, treatment. Um, we're here, it's more of like a family. So I think that's what makes Next Step unique. One, two, three, let's ride! Mark Compadre is one of the two, two, uh, two cyclists shot on the, uh, the bike trail along the river last night. Great! So, uh, where we're going? Why? Uh, they, they didn't know. It was, Thanks it was, for the pep talk, big guy. So we're going to be doing the Santa Ana River. This was the LA River. So <laughs> Alright, you know, right, right, crew! <laughs> Circle up here. That's crazy. I think uh, I'm here. We've come a long oh, way. Right in front of me. We've come over uh, 1,200 miles. Okay, we're going about to do the last uh, 30. So we've done 1,200, uh, 1,270 miles so far. It's the last 30 miles that we're about to do. I'm excited to ride with you all. Uh, as of today, we've raised over $102,000. Um, but I want to thank you all again. This has uh, been a true, uh, you know, great experience for me. It will be one of the best in my life, I'm sure. Uh, I'll never forget it. So I'm so happy to be doing it with you all. And I look forward to this last 30 miles doing it as a get together as a team. Yep. I love you guys. Yeah, you know, I, I, I have a full heart right now. I know that sounds kind of lame, but I have a full, I have a full heart. Uh, I, I'm content, and that is something that I struggle with that I have struggled with my whole life is feeling content and you know throughout this this moment right now is 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 complete and utter content content um, I'm happy and I'm happy because we we did something that that I think was huge and something that was you know many thought were crazy and <laughs> many many people did not think we would do you know I, I can't tell you how many people said oh yeah it's a nice thought but it's a lot harder than you think to get that that kind of trip organized and raise the money and um, so I'm, I'm, I, have, I have a full heart right now that we're here. My, my father who's pretty much my best friend and um, basically my hero, uh, when he was in college he was in a car accident and the doctors told him that he would never walk again. Uh, he said uh, no. I'm, I'm not going to be that way. That's not going to happen to me. And he found a way to rehab himself back to, to full health. And so to be able to do something to help people that suffer from accidents like he did and help them kind of rehab themselves back is just huge for me because my father did it um, and he didn't have access to these kind of uh, the great stuff that Next Step's doing. So it was huge for me. It's such a cool thing. And I think that Every time I mentioned it to somebody, they were like, you're doing what? And I think that we'd been planning it so long that it sort of just started to feel like that's all we were ever going to do was plan it. And so for me, the most exciting part about finishing was just that, was finishing. To see everybody be like, wow, these guys really, you know, we, we set out to do something and we went and did it. And what better feeling is there than that? Finally doing it, finally getting to the brewery. Final destination, yeah. <laughs> Love it, I can't yeah. believe it. I know. It, it, is, like, it is weird, it's sad. Yeah, it's you know, like whereas, sure. you know, you start out, and it's like, it's, Exciting. we'll never get yeah, there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And now we're there, it's like, wait a minute. I don't want to yeah, now it. it's like, well, can't we do maybe an extra three, 400 miles? Yeah. We're just getting our groove now. We're finally exactly. figuring out how everybody okay, works. Up the coast now. Exactly, we well, could. that would be a fun ride. Uh, wouldn't it? Definitely meeting the people has been the best part. We're, we're kind of this like totally functioning, dysfunctional family somehow. And we couldn't have planned it this way. Everybody just kind of came into the fold organically and it worked out perfectly. So without one person, I think it would have been a missing cog in the wheel. 
I just always thought it would be interesting um, to figure out how we are going to operate. And it's pretty crazy that every single person on this trip um, has become really good friends and everyone was so laid back and willing to help out wherever they could that the entire trip was pretty much a uh, smooth transition from four states away. As a team, we all molded and meshed very well because everybody had their own individual fights that they focused on, on the road, you know, getting ready in the pace car beforehand, mentally preparing. Oh, Charlie! It's that constant encouragement, the vans blowing past you, everybody cheering as you're on the bike, you know, that just kicks up your energy right when you're hitting the lull and everybody's just in it together. Whenever there's a flat, there's a whole team that swarms up to help. Um, everybody's willing to pitch in and I feel like that just makes the engine run so smoothly. I mean, there's kinks. There's kinks you work out day one through day eight and everyone has handled them so well and not gotten frustrated. Everybody waits so patiently for everybody to get their bike back together. Um, so it's just really incredible to see how well everyone is working together on this trip. I think everything's worked out so well. I mean, we've had our ups and downs, our bumps in the road, but um, everything has just kind of worked out. Everybody's stepped up and it's kind of like taken a new role and um, it wasn't just people doing one specific job, it was everyone doing everything. And everyone knew this was a team effort. And so they were gonna give it their all because they knew the other person was gonna give it their all. I hate them. <laughs> They're awful. Uh, you know, it just proves to me that everybody is here for a reason. We couldn't do it without every single person that was here. You know, whether it's Tim driving or Beth going to the grocery store or, you know, David cheering you on. It doesn't, I mean, I just feel like, I feel really blessed to be in the presence of everybody here. Honestly, it came together absolutely perfectly. Everybody in this team has really stepped up, uh, really helped out, and has been great on the bike. You know, everyone has their different strengths, and it's been great to just be on a team with a bunch of people that care about each other, and we've raised money for this awesome cause, and gosh, I, it's been a, it's been a life-changing experience for me for over two years as planning, but just this past week, getting to know these people has been uh, one of the best experiences of my life. $102,000. I think guys like Yanni and Mike Murphy are, are uh, pretty inspirational. If people can just say, hey, I see you guys like this, I can do that too, that's, that's where they should take that motivation. Yeah, those, those people inspire me. They're the people that wake up and say, I'm not going to let this disability stop me from living my life. Oh my gosh. Oh, this, oh, this, this, guy, guy. this guy's been like this the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even speak, really. Just, yeah. I don't even know his name. Yeah. All right, now I can finally tell you all what I really think about him. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we want to know. <laughs> so I said at the beginning of this trip that I thought this trip would be one of the most memorable experiences of our lives. And I think that's be true. And then I said that most people or everyone on the trip would become best friends, not family for life. And that became true. Um, and while I appreciate all the applaud and excitement when, you, when we arrived, uh, the real deserving person is Yanni Corey. And he is going to be yes. the one who takes that money and gives it to more deserving people. Yanni! Hey, to Yanni! To Yanni! Yes! Except there's so many new faces on the time. 
people that I don't know do something so incredible for us. It uh, means the world to have a great next step, and it really isn't about me at all. I have nothing to do with this. I'm just sitting here collecting a check. <laughs> and, uh, but and believe me, none of that money is going to me. It's 100% uh, of that money is going to go to serve the you know, wounded vets that have served this country proud, and uh, uh, you know they're. It's, it's awesome, and I know you guys had a great time, and, but that money is really going to go to help people and change their lives. And, uh, just please understand, you guys are really going to make a huge difference in many people's lives that are not getting the care today that they deserve. And uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of vets out there that don't have options for health care that they should have, and thanks to you guys, we're going to have that now. But thank you guys so much, and you're all so appreciative. Cheers. So much. We all felt like we were just doing something monumental, something so big um, that would that would be impactful in our lives for year to, years to come, uh, and that's something we would remember forever. This isn't just another week. It wasn't a vacation. It was uh, it was truly an experience and an enlightening one at that. I'd like to say to the snow to sand riders, thank you so, so much for the time that you've taken to, to raise funds for us. For those of us who can't ride or walk anymore, thank you for giving us the opportunity to come to the next step and have a little bit of rehabilitation and improve our quality of life. Thank you very, very much.